These blades of grass may reach a little too high, left uncut and overgrown. This lawn may look like a sign of neglect, but it's actually being ignored with love. You know, when you don't water your lawn, uh, maybe it looks like you've, you're just neglectful. <laughs> and if, you have, if you're afraid of that, or if you want to, your neighbors to start, you know, a discussion maybe, well, put a yellow fish on your boulevard and, and uh, see what, why, you know, you're not watering. This yellow fish is part of the Mid-Vancouver Island Habitat Enhancement Society's Salmon Friendly Lawn Program. The yellowfish lets people know you're choosing not to water your lawn or use pesticides and fertilizers, and you're doing it to help preserve our natural habitat. It's a, uh, a positive way of, of acting, I think, and that is that you don't do something uh, because you're being respectful of something else. It's important to care for the whole of the environment, and that includes the fish. I mean, we exist in relationship to all the, the things that are around us, the trees, the plants, the animals, the fish, and so we need to care for it all. People don't realize this about the water cycle. It falls to the ground and then it goes up again, either from the sea or from streams, and falls again. And if you start taking the water out of there, you're going to stop the cycle. By creating that disconnect in the cycle, the water levels in our rivers drop. Faye says this creates a problem for the reproduction of our local fish. And when there's not much water, it gets spread over, you know, a, long, a wide area and is, is, it heats up and it's useless for, for fish. Sally says it's not just the fish that are affected by watering and use of pesticides, though. My dog rolls on my lawn, my grandchildren play on the lawn and I put pesticides on there. It could affect them. And um, it's also going into the ground, into the water, and into the creatures in the ground, like all the little bacteria and the worms and things like that that help to keep the, the soil healthy, could be affected by the pesticides. An emerald green lawn, perfectly cut, seems to be the standard in some neighborhoods, but that too is changing. It's like a status symbol or something, but uh, th that's changing too, and, and uh, you know, you see a lot more people turning lawns into potato patches or, you know, vegetable gardens, and uh, that's, that's, that's good. That's good for the environment, and uh, it's good for the fish, it's good for the people. And to grow a garden in an eco-friendly way is to use rain barrels like this one. Sally uses the rainwater collected here to water her plants year-round. Faye says she hopes initiatives like the yellow fish will help change our perspective of how we treat our lawns. To become part of the program, you can visit mvihes.bc.ca. In Parksville, I'm Rayanne LaPlante.